Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we are talking coyote killers or dogs that are employed to keep these little rascals at bay. Every year, farmers and hunters dispatch thousands of coyotes when livestock and pets are at risk. This is cruel and needless as coyotes are a cousin to our domesticated dog. Plus, it is us humans who theoretically are in the coyote's domain. So what to do? Well, there is a far more humane solution. Guardian oh. dogs. Today on Animal Watch, we will be giving you the ultimate guide to the dogs that you need to be owning in the USA if you want to keep coyotes from bothering you and your animals. <laughs> oh. And no, Kyomi, you're perfectly safe. Animal Watch has provided you, our viewers, with multi-million viewed episodes on the world's toughest wolf killer breeds. Dogs employed to watch over their flocks across Europe and Asia, providing an effective and humane management of the animals. Most of the time, the wolves are not harmed as the dogs do not catch them. And this organic approach means that not only are the flocks managed with far less loss to the farmers, but the simple canine presence is enough to suggest to the wolf that there are easier meals to be found elsewhere. Now, with the extermination of the wolf in the USA, coyotes are popping up to fill the void. Native to the western two-thirds of the USA, coyotes began dramatically expanding their range in the early 1900s. They've increased their habitat across North America by 40% since the 1950s, twice the rate of any other North American carnivore, and now live in every US state but Hawaii, and news has it they're on their way down to South America. Olé! So why are they so successful? Their numbers exploded when the wolf was virtually eradicated. Wolves used to balance the coyote population by killing them when they came into their territory and also competing with the coyotes for food. But now, well, it's another case of nature out of sync due to man's intervention. As well as having no predators or competitors, coyotes are lone hunters and scavengers, which come together to breed only once a year, which means that they can successfully live virtually unseen in urban as well as rural areas. Much like the red fox of Europe by quietly and elusively getting around unseen and surviving on any food, including vegetables and rubbish that they find. Wolves are much larger and often move as a pack, drawing far more attention to their presence. So what to do? So what do humans do? They just start killing animals when things go out of balance, suggesting that it's for conservation. When they could have just left the wolf to do his job instead of balancing nature with bloodthirsty hunters who kill for thrills. 400,000 coyotes are killed annually in the USA, but it doesn't work. And I'll tell you why it doesn't. Like the game Whack-A-Mole, killing coyotes only creates a habitat vacuum, giving their competitors a chance to move in. For example, if you kill one coyote, you open up territory to a new one who needs it, so you never ever remove the coyotes from your area. Beyond that, coyote biology is perfect. When the rate of killing goes up, nature steps in. Young coyotes mature much faster and females produce larger litters. Nature's way of trying to rebalance any upset. So if you can't eradicate them with violence, what's the solution? Dogs, yes, flock guardians. Dogs step into that void that wolves have left. Thanks to man creating this void to start with. But all is not lost. We have five excellent flock guardians to show you today. All great dogs that love and protect their human family too. So you can have a pet as well as a savior. Just make sure you have a large 
fence garden or lots of land as none of the following dogs appreciate being kept in a tiny flat or a little garden with a patio. They also need land to defend as it's in their blood to do this. They need good secure fencing as flock guardians are independent and are harder to train as well as becoming quite territorial, meaning you need to stop them having a go at people walking past your property, or you might just have a lawsuit on your hands. So let's start at number five. The Caucasian Shepherd, otherwise known as the Ovchaka. We have filmed this fearsome dog many times on Animal Watch. He originated in the Caucasian mountains in Georgia and is renowned for his guarding ability and his devotion to his family and land. He is usually around 30 inches tall for a male and weighs up to a staggering 70 kilograms, which, believe you me, is pretty heavy. Many clips on YouTube show him taking a wolf, but this is not going to happen in the USA as most livestock areas are fenced and the coyote is super agile at escaping. So, what's the point? Deterrent! This dog sleeps with one eye open and his heavy coat means he is accustomed to living outside. In fact, he overheats in the house. So he will be as happy as Larry walking your perimeter, making sure coyotes know about his presence. He is also loyal to his family, as you can see here, where Maximus is allowing strange children to meet and greet him. We can guarantee that no coyote will want to mess with a dog three times his size and will trot on by to the next garden, who is without a flock guardian to protect his plot. Just make sure you socialize him well as he grows, as he could become aggressive to strangers if he is isolated. But if that's what you want in a guard dog, then so be it. He will always look to and treasure his master above all. Number four, the Turkish Kangal. This dog is hailed as the most precious flock guardian breed in Turkey and is so prized that it can be hard to get a purebred Kangal out of the country. But it's not impossible as shown here, where I meet a few who made their way to the UK. The most beautiful thing about a Kangal is his love and devotion to his family. He is super tough and driven when at work absolutely treasures his pack and will cuddle and nurture the family's children and any pets he is raised with. The Kangal can be huge, but let's talk the true working Kangal breed, not the larger Mastiff mixes. The true athletic working Kangal stands 80 centimeters tall and weighs up to 60 kilograms. He is faster than a Caucasian Shepherd, so better suited to larger farms and areas that require fast action. He is seen chasing off packs of wolves across Europe with great success, and he will lay his life down for the safety of his family. He has less fur than many of the other breeds, so can survive in warmer parts of the US, and will molt a little less. But he'll still molt, so if you want no molting, get a Zolo. They are pretty tough to walk, as they are so powerful, but he won't need that if your land is large enough to give him a territory to pace around and protect all day, as that's what he loves most doing, when he's not cuddling your kids as their most cherished best friend. Number three, the Anatolian Shepherd. What I hear you cry, that's the same as a Kangal. Wrong. The Anatolian Shepherd is not a Kangal. A Kangal is a pure blood breed descended from one province in Turkey. They have a very unique bloodline and colour, whereas the Anatolian Shepherd is an American breed made up with Kangal like dogs who have travelled over to the USA from Turkey in general and have been bred together. The Anatolian Shepherd can come in many colours, whereas the Kangal only comes in one colour. But politics aside, he's tall, powerful, fast and strong. And he loves his family. Face it, the last thing we want is an effective flock guardian who will bite your kids. So we are just showcasing family-friendly breeds today. Breeds who can happily guard an American garden as well as a rural farm in Turkey. 
The Anatolian Shepherd stands 80 centimetres tall and weighs up to 60 kilograms. He is independent like the Kangal, so don't expect tricks and recall. But one thing you must give him is a huge, securely fenced garden or he will be truly unhappy. This breed cannot live in a flat or he could become frustrated and change his territory guarding onto guarding you. Which means next time you walk down the road with him, he might just defend you and we don't want that. He adores kids and is a gentle giant, so if you're having trouble locating a Kangal, then the Anatolian Shepherd is your next go-to obtainable and effective coyote prevention dog. Number two, the Marima Sheepdog. Now we are getting into floof bag territory. You want a dog to stop those coyotes from raiding your garbage and running off with Kitty, but the kids want something cute and fluffy. They're not that enamoured with the huge Kangal types and a little scared of the Caucasian Shepherd. They keep asking for a Golden Retriever or a Labrador. So why not give them an effective flock guardian who looks like he could be a big, shaggy Labrador? Meet the Maramar Sheepdog. This majestic ancient flock guardian comes from Italy and has a wonderful track record of being an effective defense against animals such as foxes and wolves. So will most certainly help defend your garden against coyotes. Plus he loves kids and cuddles. He stands approximately 73 centimeters tall and weighs up to 45 kilograms. And just remember he has a huge thick coat so probably not suited to warmer climates and his fur will fall out all over the house and car. Won't it, Kiyomi? Mm. <sighs> but if the kids want a shaggy white retriever type, you are guaranteed to keep the kids happy. Plus stop the coyotes dropping by for a quick chat with your chicken house in the rear. Just remember he needs a large, securely fenced garden too, or he will be unhappy and won't feel like he can do his job effectively. Finally, at number one. He's the fuzziest and cutest flock guardian of all. The Great Pyrenees or the Pyrenean Mountain Dog. He's huge, he's super cute, and he's very, very good at his job. His big size up to 50 kilograms means he will deter any coyote, even the larger males out there. He stands so tall at over 80 centimeters that he can easily put his feet on a grown person's shoulders, but gentle enough to give them loads of kisses with it. And he's noisy too, but as with all the flock guardians, they come with a certain degree of barking. But if your land or garden is big enough, then it's a great trade-off for keeping those coyotes at bay. Why not pair him up with some smaller dogs and he can be their protector from these coyotes? when you are scared to let the little ones out. And remember, he also does have a long coat. So again, not for hot climates and not for the super house proud. He's also independent like all of the above breeds, so don't expect great recall. And he will probably not like strange dogs, but that's the canine defense bred into him. Just socialize him well with kids and dogs you want him to like, and he'll be just fine. There you go, family-friendly coyote deterrence. He is a guardian and a pet all rolled into one and not a single coyote killed for hurt. So as we said, no point killing them as another one will just come and fill its place. So the best line of attack is defense. And face it, coyotes are pretty cute. Just look at some of these fellas. And if you fancy a little koi dog as a pet, then just take a look at these little cuties bred by Mark Klemperer, who breeds coyote mixes to actually live in the same house as you. And you never know, he might just defend your garden from coyote competitors.
And if you enjoyed this episode, then please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner. And be sure to tune in every week while I'll be bringing you more amazing episodes on dogs, wolves, coyotes, animal rescue and conservation.